Um, but it's a larger story, and uh, I'd like to tell, tell it to you. It's called Do Not Walls Have Lowers. Woo! <laughs> Edgar was a bright and curious young Yeti who enjoyed playing games with his good friend, Fast Freddy. <laughs> but before we follow their tracks in the snow, there are a few things about Yetis that you ought to know. Yetis are huge and covered in hair. If you spot one, you're lucky, as they're extremely rare. They have giant feet and prominent jaws. Most people are frightened by the size of their claws. But one of the things that you mustn't forget is that no one has met a mean Yeti yet. <laughs> if you look past all of their threatening features, you'll discover that Yetis are the gentlest creatures. But some people like to make a big deal of claiming that Yetis aren't even for real. They roll their eyes and make all sorts of jokes, then tell you that Yetis are just a big hoax. But those sorts of people are not our concern. Thus, back to the story, we shall quickly return. One day after they finished playing ball, <laughs> one day after they finished playing ball, Freddie held up an icicle and said, "I'm a narwhal." <laughs> Ed Edgar was confused by what Freddie said, so he asked, "What's a narwhal?" As he scratched his head, "Narwhals are whales with long, pointy horns." Freddie answered with glee. You can go ask my mom if you don't believe me. <laughs> this puzzled Edgar, and he wasn't sure what to say. So he blurted out something that is strange to this day. Do narwhals have blowholes? <laughs> that was his curious query. But neither could come up with a viable theory. They decided to head towards the Arctic North Pole to find out for themselves about the blowhole. So they gathered their things with some fruit and some bread and quickly jumped onto the traveling sled. To the north, said Fast Freddy, as they sped down the slope, eyes wide with excitement and gleaming with hope. They traveled nonstop through ice storms and blizzards. They asked for directions from two battling wizards. <laughs> they crossed a bridge made of ice and rode on a ferry. One night, they slept by a Tibetan monastery. <laughs> they climbed up cliffs, and they climbed down stairs. They got in a fight with some surly polar bears. <laughs> and after seven days of perpetual motion, they finally made it to the Arctic Ocean. They spent the night on the snowy beach, knowing that the answer was finally within reach. The next morning, they knew there was no time to stall if they wanted to find a friendly narwhal. So they hopped on an iceberg and floated out to sea, hoping to end up where a narwhal might be. After hours of searching, Edgar was feeling forlorn. Would they ever find a whale with a long, pointy horn? They continued on at Fast Freddy's insistence until he suddenly yelled, Hey, what's that in the distance? <laughs> out on the horizon, they could see some commotion then a long, pointy horn emerged from the ocean. The two young yetis couldn't believe it was true. When the narwhal swam up and said, How do you do? <laughs> Edgar smiled and said, We're doing just fine. But I wonder if you could answer a question of mine. But of course, was the friendly narwhal's reply. I might not know the answer, but I'll certainly try. Do narwhals have blowholes? Edgar eagerly inquired. We're a long way from home, and we're awfully tired. There was a long pause. <laughs> and a moment of tension. <laughs> it appeared that the narwhal wasn't paying attention. <laughs> then suddenly he said, quick, climb on my back. We need to get moving before the lemmings attack. <laughs> So Edgar and Freddy jumped onto the whale, and they were gone in a flash with a flick of his tail. As they rode on his back toward the icy seashore, they both found the answer they'd been looking for. <laughs> on the back of the narwhal was a hole in his head. It's a blowhole, the yetis in unison said. <laughs> the question
question was answered. The mystery solved. Thank goodness the lemmings were never involved. <laughs> Safe on the shore, they said goodbye to their friend. And with that, this fine story has come to an end. So the, the big story behind this all is that we wrote a book, and uh, we have to have some available tonight for everyone to buy, and uh, we'll, we'll be signing them today, and you can come up to the table and we'll be signing them. We have 12 limited edition hardback copies tonight, 12 only. You can't buy the hard copies on the website anywhere. We do have a website, it's dunarwalls.globals.com. You can go there, you can buy the book there if you'd like, if you don't want to buy it tonight. Another weird thing about this venue is that since we can't list prices, we can't take money here, so it ends up being a sign-up sheet. You sign up, we give you your book, we can collect money out on the sidewalk, <laughs> or, or we can get it from you later, because we'll have your name and you better put your number and stuff. What else do you have? Uh, what's that? What else do you have that we can meet you on the sidewalk? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a nice walk. Um, and we also have some of these buttons are going to be for sale as well, it, um, over on the table. Um, if you've seen some of us wearing them, they'll be available for a dollar for a button. Um, and also, it's available on Amazon.com if you want to go there as well. Um, the one thing that would be great is if you went there and wrote an awesome review about the book. <laughs> and, then, and then you bought the book actually at DunarWalls.Globals.com because we get better profit through our site. So, <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, we will, you guys can please look around some more. And of course, remember these things are for sale. Uh, Matt's article is for sale um, as well. And um, we'll just uh, talk to you around the table back there if you want to get anything signed. Yeah, if you have any questions. I saw a couple slides in here that didn't correlate with um, stuff on the wall. Exactly. Yeah. So did you not do? Right? No, they're in the book. Yeah. Um, they're in the book. That's yeah. what I thought. So they're in the book, but they're not and, actually. And any of those prints, any any spread in the book. Anything all, you saw here. Yeah, anything you saw there. All 15 of those uh, you can order. And I will have printed out on Canvas. On the website. We just chose to show a, a selection of over, over here so that you wouldn't be reading okay. the whole book. So, <laughs> so I could do something. <laughs> so, so yeah, Matt and I have in the past have done collaborations where I've done the writing and Matt has done the illustrations. And uh, we've, we've just had so much fun with it that we came up with this idea for the project. It started, it started from the title. It was something that was said. Um, we both worked for Archie McPhee. In the, in the course of a day, someone mentioned, do, do normals have blow holes? And I thought it was the funniest thing ever, and so we just based the, the story around that. So it started from that title, and from there, you know, I just wrote the story, and then I approached Matt and asked him to do the, uh, the artwork. And, I, and if you haven't heard the story already, Matt started with these pictures on the left-hand side, actually cutting things out of fabric, and he was going to do an individual one for every um, page in the book, but it was extremely time-consuming. And um, so we decided to go um, to use the fabric still, but to go into the Photoshop realm and do things a little bit easier in there. So the rest of them you can see are the results. But these ones are kind of the early prototype yeah. stuff on the wall right there. So, anyways, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it.